is everybody in? Is everybody in? The ceremony is about to begin. It is Wednesday night and we hath returned. This is Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. It's the glorified outdoor extravaganza, the bass fishing maniacy that you have known to come and love. We are here tonight live. I am your host, Pat Renwick. Um, and, and man, we are really excited about this show tonight. I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because we were off for a week. Maybe. Ma- maybe that's what it is. But it could be the fact that we have uh, just an amazing bass fisherman on tonight. A guy that has, has rocked the ages. He has talked to the ages. <laughs> Takahiro Amori's coming on live tonight. Yes. <laughs> Woo. Talk. I can't believe it. I get to talk crankbaits with Takahiro. Oh, man. It's pretty cool. Uh, also, a, a, uh, a glimmering glimpse and a breath of fresh air. The latest addition to Bassmaster Live. He, he's coming on here tonight, and we're pretty excited about this, too. Uh, Ronnie Moore. Ronnie Moore joins us tonight, too. Can you believe it? Can you, can you believe it? Also, more big things happening here tonight. Uh, I want to remind you that we have another big uh, giveaway tonight. Everybody loves giveaways, and we have them every Wednesday night here on Straight Cast. So, here's what you got to do. If you want $50 worth of Dem Jigs, those are custom hand-tied jigs. Dem Jigs, not them jigs. Dem Jigs. If you like $50 prize pack of Dem Jigs. What you got to do is you have to like the live broadcast on Facebook and share the live broadcast on Facebook. It's real easy. It's 50 bucks worth of custom jigs. Like the live broadcast. Share the live broadcast. There it is right there. Easy enough. That's all you got to do. And uh, JP High, the hip-hop fisherman, he will randomly pick a, uh, a winner. At the end of the broadcast. Uh, but sitting to my right, a, a guy that needs um, no introduction, but I'm going to give him an introduction I anyway. An introduction. I, I'm going to give you an introduction right here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. Hello. Yes. That's the popcorn. Am I on? Yeah, I'm on. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Chukal. Dilly dilly. All right. Dilly dilly. Hey, your lid's cleaner than mine. Yeah, because th- this is my uh, custom Pat Renwick Signature Series TH Marine Cup. That I have right here. Well, this is my Ryan Whitaker uh, signature series. But yours, is, Marine yours is dirty, though. Yeah. It's because I use it. <laughs> Mine is, too. But I use Palm Olive. You can tell. Right there. Who? Yeah, we're working on Palm Olive for a sponsor. Hey, the guy over here that's running the social media tonight and answering your questions on the social media, he is known as the OG Hip Hop Fisherman. Everybody knows him, though, as J.P. Hey! 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 Oh, yep. JP, man. What's up, guys? How are you, dude? Good, good. It's good. Let's rock this. So what do they got to do to win these these jigs? Uh, just like and share the live feed on Facebook. Like and share the live feed on Facebook, and it's 50 bucks worth of custom jigs. Boom, boom, pow. It is right there. Hey, do you guys know um, who's uh, red on the head like a producer should be? <laughs> do you guys know? I do. Do you know who's the best damn producer in this room? I have a hunch. Do you know who's a hell of a bass fisherman? Yes. Do you know who the super glue that keeps this trailer on this jig of a show right here is? Uh huh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Andrew Ellenberger, hello. the Ginger Ninja. Hello. 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 <laughs> hello. 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 That's the Ginger Ninja. He's right there. (laughs) He's right there. (laughs) Hey, man, it's going to be an action-packed show tonight. And if you can't tell, we're all excited. Plus, I'm hopped up on Red Bull. So this is going to go swimmingly well. So put the power poles down. Don't go anywhere. When we get back, it's Takahiro Amore. Yes. Step up your game. It has been said that professionals are only as good as the tools they work with. And Alpha Angler has developed the ultimate set of tools for you, the competitive angler. 
Alpha Angler Custom Rods, brought to fruition by the passion of Master Craftsman Jake Boomer and 2017 BASS Angler of the Year, Brandon Palinick. Alpha Angler Rods are custom made in the USA, designed and engineered to be perfect. Alpha Angler utilizes a very unconventional approach to making the very best bass rods, from drop shotting to flipping. Alpha Angler's focus is on building perfectly balanced tournament grade bass rods at an affordable price. Join the Alpha Lusion today and purchase direct at alphaangler.com. Step up your game, alphaangler.com. Discover the magic of balsa. For decades, professional fishermen in the angling elite come to rely on the fish catching performance of hand carved custom balsa lures. PH Custom Lures by Phil Hunt have assembled the comprehensive line of custom balsa baits. The original Hunt and Pete, Bill Lowen's Dollar Bill, Wesley Strader's Plop and Pete, and the new Matt Heron Fudd, in addition to the entire family of PH Custom Lures, are just what you need to get that edge over the competition. Discover the magic of balsa today and visit PH Custom Lures. Lures.com. That's phcustomlures.com. The swim jig technique is one of the most successful ways to put fish in the boat. Time in and time out, Bravani Bait swim jigs are just the right tool for the job. Beaming with quality, the Bravani swim jigs come in a myriad of colors, feature the best premium hooks and solid trailer keepers to give you, the serious bass angler, the confidence you need to accomplish your goal of putting more fish in the boat. So go to BravaniBaits.com and start climbing the ladder to swim jig success. Taming the beast isn't easy, but the bigger your electronics, the more you have on the line. In conditions like this, you need the KVD Kong Extreme Electronics Mount. The only electronics mount designed and built to be rock solid. No movement, no matter how heavy your gear. A marine grade mount for fresh or salt water that's monstrously strong. The KVD Kong Extreme Electronics Mount. Welcome back. Welcome back to Stray Cats Outdoor Cartoon Television. I'm your host, Pat Renwick. Uh, we are very excited, super stoked uh, right now to bring to you Bass Fishing Galaxy, the one and the only. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your recent Bass Master Elite Series champion of Lake Martin, the inaugural or the kickoff event of the 2018 season. He's the champ. And his name is Takahiro Amori, and he's right here. Woo! Yes. Hi, guys. What's up, Tak? I'm good. What's going? Hey, are, did you hit your video button on the uh, on the Skype? I, I I think I did. Try try and hit that video button again, Tak. Yeah. Let's see what happens here. Cause we had you for a minute. We had yeah. we had you for a minute, but we can't we can't see you. Can you see us? Yes, yes, I can see you, but uh, hmm. Uh, Hit that video button, Tak. Okay. Let's see what we can. There There's Takahiro. Yes, yes, Takahiro Amori again. We got you. We got you, Tak. Yes. Know. Yes! Look at I you! I love this setup. I know. He drives around with that amazing Elite Series trophy. <laughs> you got to buckle it in. I, I, <laughs> you have a car seat for that thing? I don't know. I have it with me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't get pulled over in Texas because you have to have Elite Series trophies in a car seat all the time in Texas. I hope you know that, Doc. <laughs> Welcome to the show, man. 
Hey, thanks for having me. Oh man, it, it's 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 our pleasure, man. I mean, I'll tell you what, we've been uh, we've been a fan of yours uh, for ages, I guess, and and not not dating ourselves here, but I mean, uh, you you've been at this for what, like twenty six or twenty six, twenty seven years or something, talk. I guess so, but uh, I mean, time goes so fast. It's not feels like it, but uh, I started. I was ninety, ninety two. Yeah, so I, I know. I mean, and, and especially like as we get older, talk d- doesn't time just go so quick? It's crazy. It is. It, it, it's absolutely especially when you're on the water. You know what I mean? There is. I don't think that there's any period of time lapse that is quicker than when you're bass fishing. It just seems like, boom, you start the day, and boom, it's over. I agree. Yeah, unless you're having a bad derby, of yeah. course. Then then you're just thinking about what's for dinner. I feel like know? it goes faster even during a derby. Those yeah. hours clicking by. It's absolutely crazy. So, talk. you came here, and I think everybody kind of knows the deal that all of your life you wanted to be a professional bass fisherman. And you came here from Japan in, what, 1992? Yes, sir. Awesome. Now, what I would like to know about is, is tell me about when you first got here to America in 1992. What, what's going on? Get, walk me through the process here. What did, where, you, you just landed and started bass fishing? What would you do? Yes, I, uh, of course I come from by the airplane, right? Yes, uh, yes, so. you didn't fly in. I got you. <laughs> Talk's got jokes. I love it. But, uh... I was 21 years old when I got here to bass fishing tournament. Actually, I came here to fish, but I, uh, you know, I had no sponsor. I just lent a rental car. I just went to a tournament, fish as non border. Gotcha. And, that's how it- and that was 1992. Yes. So when you came here in '92, what what did you do? Who did you stay with? Like, did you have people that helped you out or what? No, I, I don't know anybody. So uh, basically, I had a small rental car. I sleep inside a rental car. Okay. <laughs> so you lived in your rental car? I did. My first trip was 40 days straight. I only <laughs> wow. stayed a couple of nights in the motel, took a shower. Other than that, I was just, you know, living that little rental car, just, you know, fished every day, just, uh, you know, look new country, you know? Yeah, man. Wow, a stranger in a strange land. What were you doing in between derbies, though? Just just fishing from shore? Or did you know anyone that had a boat that you could get out on? No, I went to uh, just fish from the bank. I went to Sam Raven, Turtle Bend, Lake Fork, you know, because and and my next tournament was the Gunnersville, Alabama. But in between, I went to the Ranger Factory, Bass Pro Shops. You know, that <laughs> was, wow. was a good trip. <laughs> yeah, all over the place. Talk, you have amazing teeth, by the way. I, 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 you have an amazing amazing smile right there. Have you ever? Oh, you. Yeah, you should get like Colgate or something as your title sponsor next year. Or a toothpaste brand. Have you ever considered that? Arm and Hammer. No. <laughs> no I'm giving you ideas. I'm an idea man, Talk. I'm not, I'm not shy with the ideas. I, I'm giving them to you there. So, hey, I mean, you... Uh, now I, I I did a little research on you, and okay. I and tell, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? But the first derby that you ever fished as a boater would that have been Sam Rayburn Invitational? That was a I fished as a non boater. That was a non boater. Well, back then it was draw draw tournament, so both okay. pro share the day, share the front of the boat, but mm-hmm. uh, we do flipping a coin, whatever to. Sh- to decide whose guy's boat taken that day. And I was fishing non border anyway. Right? So, you know, but I still, still it's a professional tournament in my mind. It, it, oh, absolutely. A- absolutely. And then I remember the first time, like, really, it, it, you know, in, no disrespect intended, but noticing Takahiro Amori was, was 1996. When you, that was your first win, correct? Yes. Yeah, the, on that Lake of the Ozarks, right? Yes, that was my first win, Bassmaster wins. And and right there, I mean, you had some you had some pretty tough finishes before then, but you could kind of see a little escalation and 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 boom right there that that first victory. Did you did you kind of feel like at that point you had a chance, like you could really do this? 
No, not really. I mean, I, you know, it, it's. Uh, I was still try to learn as much as I can, get more experience. But for me, I feel like if I looking back, my breakthrough career year was 2000 or 2001. Oh, gotcha. That's when you really I, started to, to feel it. You started to feel yeah, it then. Yeah, I made my first Bassmasters Classic to qualify. That was 2001. Thank God so, you weren't at the Classic in Chicago because <laughs> that was awful in 2000. <laughs> I don't that one, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so you uh, – is, is it true that, and you and I talked a little bit on the phone about this, but Rick Clun kind of kind of took you under his wing a little bit, didn't he? You you attended the advanced angler courses that Rick used to hold, and and he would it be fair enough to say that he kind of helped mold you as an angler? Yes, uh, he is my hero, still he is, and uh, I have a lot of respect. Like he did one like a folk classic, and the, the way he approach to the each tournament or, or where he not get any help no information he does his own fishing 100 percent i have a lot of respect for that yeah you know i still see him at the campground every tournament it's like you know with him fishing the same tournament or or like i won the same year the one he won two years ago like it's like living my dream so tell us how the phone call went from Rick Clun after you won this event here on, on Lake Martin. Uh, he, he texted me and said, uh, he kind of like said proud of you. He's proud of you? That's what he texted me. Yeah, and You're his student. It's like the karate kid. I am. <laughs> you are the karate kid. <laughs> that's awesome so tell me about those like how, how you felt at these advanced angler courses because i know that a lot of professional anglers at the time uh th they attended this class and it was a pretty special deal that that rick clun had at at his place there in missouri right i mean tell us a little bit about that about that school yeah it, it was in his house it's like it takes a couple of miles from the blacktop road to get his house in the mountain. That's where he lived. Wow. And we had about 10, maybe 12 of us stay camping his, you know, his, uh, his property. Wow. And uh, we stayed one week. Then we eat a lot of buffalo meat. <laughs> nice. Deer meat. It was... Uh, <laughs> And then Rick and his wife, Marisa, take care of us, uh, all the meal and everything. And a uh, lot, lot of, about uh, respect for the nature, uh, to expose, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to explain, but it's not like you learn how to catch more fish right away, but it's more likely how, how to, I mean, how to, understanding nature gotcha and how that right. relates the correlation to bass fishing right there yeah so did tell us something that that you learned about crankbait fishing from rick clun because i know that you're you're a crankbait fishing freak you love it you absolutely <laughs> love it and and so does rick clun so i'm kind of guessing again and assuming that that there's some kind of kind of correlation there also I do. Uh, I every time I see him at the campground, if I had any question about uh, whatever, you know, I ask him about it. But uh, back then, like ninety, I don't know. It's uh, he was dominating really good about two thousand one to two thousand two, two thousand three for the FLW wins a couple of times, win the Bassmasters, and the Masters. The way he won was using square bill crankbait, sure. especially good. And I asked him, well, what's the difference, plastics and the bass of wood? And uh, just, uh, you know, the, being around him to be able to ask the question, like, you know, anytime, that's really helped me. And uh, that's how I become like a square bill, you know. A square bill freak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how do you, I mean, you brought up a great point there. How, how do you know when to use a balsa crankbait? 
versus a plastic crankbait. What determines that for you, Tak? Well, I like to do, if I am fishing around the wood cover, I like more buoyancy, so I like to use balsa wood. But if I'm fishing like a lip wrap or bar docks or some kind of like a shell bed, I, I don't mind using a plastic square bit, which uh, it came up for the Lucky Crab called 1.5. 2.5 it was dominated back then everybody copied that stuff later sure but, uh, mm -hmm. still the same you know rocky crowd 1.5 bait i use it the one lake martin but stuff like that i uh i learn a lot about it and it like like uh depending on the situation like i said you know we would have more buoyancy so if you want to less hung up you want to go to boss wood so do you still have like cherished old bagley's laying around somewhere i do you do. <laughs> do do you guard them with your life at the campground do you have dogs that guard them for you hounds of hell i hide him you know. <laughs> he hides them. there's a secret compartment <laughs> that's that's awesome man so you uh i mean but remember the times when it, you could you're a fishing freak okay again man i mean all if you had your your choice you would probably still compete in both uh, FLW and BASS, wouldn't you? I mean, if they were, if it was available for you to do both, wouldn't you probably do that? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Today is, uh, I feel like more talent becoming to the bass elite, and I, my, my passion is, you know, competition as a fish in a tournament angler. I like to fish highest level for the, the for a more talented group, and I never said any FLW or bass side, but it seems like bass sides got Kevin Van Damme, like a skeet list, Iconetti, and my age as a group, the more likely, uh, I feel like right now the bass elite is where I want to be. And, uh, you know, the schedule wise, it's tough to fish both tour. And I did that like 12 or 13 years. But uh, right now, my focus is, is bass elite and fishing and major league fishing also. Yeah, gotcha. The the, uh, the 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 major league fishing that's kind of that's right up your alley, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very small group. Of the, you know, most of the elite uh, guys, you know, fish against the same guys fishing Bassmaster elite, and uh, it's very intense format. And I really in Enjoy the to figure out quickly. Plus, I think that's you know made me become better fisherman in a way. You have no information. Uh, the press never been before, and you have to catch fish right away. So it's it's a lot of challenge. But uh, I, I like those challenges. Absolutely, and it's the it's probably the purest form of of competitive angling there is right now. It is. Yeah, I, I absolutely. So. I know that you're a real, real big advocate of not only staying physically fit, but mentally fit. And mental toughness is, is a huge part of your game. Am I correct, Tak? Yes. Uh, the tournament fishing is a very, I'm more likely, like 90% is a mental game. Today's, I say, anybody can get the best boat, best equipment, like like outboard engine, I have Yamaha, but I mean, all the equipment dialed to, uh, you know, the today's the technology, the GPS and all of that is great, but still you have to make a decision on your brain to, to have a good game plan. You have to make a good adjustment when condition changes, whatever happened. So the mental part is uh, still, I say like 90% is important. You know, of course, you have to be physically fit, but still, your brain gonna control all that stuff. Sure. So, so I say, you know, mentally staying sharp, mentally tough, all that is is you know still all the good equ equipment today is above beyond still most important things. That's what I think. So er everybody kind of knows how you can stay physically fit, but how do you stay and maintain mental fitness? How do you do that? Uh, uh, you know, that's a good question. I mean, I, uh, I get rid of a lot of stuff. Uh, if I don't need, you know, I try to keep it simpler 
and uh, try not get too much. Uh, I don't know. I'm to not get distracted. It, it's it's a good question. It's hard. Sure. But in, I try not to stay too much in a social network. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right. You get wrapped yeah, up in the rabbit hole of the, tip the, of the week. media. Yeah. Yeah. Try not to read too much magazine or newspaper. Or don't watch much six o'clock news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Focus my fishing. Focus you know, on the fishing. Yeah, my own talent. How I can grow my talent, my own talent. How I can become better. That's that's kind of like focus I have to bring up to. The best Takahiro for Takahiro. That's what you focus on. Yeah. So in other words, I cannot be like Rick Crown or KBD or Skeet. So I do my best for what I can do to catch more fish. So that's where I have to focus, I think. Otherwise, today, so many information, I mean, you know, on the social network, they have so many, you know, little video tip to uh, picture, I mean, you know, the magazine, the newspaper. It's crazy amount sure. of stuff get distracted. Now, you know, I mean, I, I uh, that's what I think. You it's know, too it's much. Way too much information out there. It's, it's crazy, man. So I, after you won your, your, uh, the event there at, at Lake Martin, and again, congratulations on that, you, you returned home. And I thought it was pretty cool that your, your whole neighborhood kind of gave you a, a, a warm welcoming party, man. That, that, was, that was pretty badass, man. That was pretty cool. It, it is. It is good, good to be have somebody cheer you when you get home. You know, I, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not fine if you're just by yourself, you know. Yeah, so. it, it, it was right there. So now, do you still have the um, the swimming pool where you test baits in it? Of course I do. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a slip and slide that leads into that pool or no? Uh, <laughs> not much. Uh, what was that? Nothing. I'm, I'm being a jerk. <laughs> the, uh, the <laughs> but uh, how do you test the baits in that in that pool? Tell me, tell me like the procedure. What's Tox procedure? Well, I get a lot of new baits. I heard about it, whatever, the, you know, every year. I mean, every day that this whole industry come up with new baits, right? And uh, something I want to interested in, somebody won a tournament with that bait, whatever, I bring up to the home, and I just try to see how they swim. You have to have clear water to be able to see it. That's why I made my own swimming pool, to just to test my bait. And I use daily to just, instead of going to the lake, you can see exactly how they bait swim or come back from the tournament, the bait, I caught a lot of fish. I just let them see how they swim compared to other one, you know. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that, that's still, I use a lot and, the, you know, that's helped me to understand visually how, how those each bait swim differently. So how do you categorize, like, I know that, um, obviously wood crankbaits all behave differently, right? There's, you could have two identical wood balsa crankbaits and they'll behave completely different than each other. And then it also kind of happens with, with plastic crankbaits, although the consistency, like in your Lucky Crafts, it, it's a more consistent action, but certainly you probably find in your testing talk that, that the Lucky Crafts do behave differently also, correct? Yes. So do you categorize them and have special ones like a derby day tournament and a practice uh, crankbait? You know, uh, do, do, you got, do you categorize them at all? As by I did. I, uh, I had a Sharpie to put uh, like A plus, A or B, and uh, I, I save A plus for the tournament days. And what is an A plus crankbait? What is that? Uh, even the same like a Barca B, Bagri, whatever, Lucky Crab, it's uh, more likely uh, same. I have like maybe 50, 60 same bait and just keep learning to see how they swim. Sometimes they go more like hunt or some ones go a little deeper, stuff like that I see. So I just put the A plus, A or B so I know what it is. Gotcha. So, but I still don't understand. The, yeah. So the A plus is like what? It's the, it oh. runs perfectly or it hunts or it, it's the deeper one. What is an A plus crankbait to you, Tuck? 
Usually, A plus, I put it on for the balsa baits, means they kind of like hunt. Gotcha. And if I, if I read them super fast, they start like uh, go crazy. They do that. <laughs> they juke. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, same time, if hunt too much, fish miss it. So they snag in the heads, whatever. So, you know, sometimes I like around the straight, going deeper. But it all depends on the bait. But usually the good ones run straight, and if I wind in fast, they start going a sideway. Okay. But I mean, it's hard to explain. You have to see it. You gotcha. Know? No, I, I'm I'm with you. I know a exactly medium, what you're a saying. Medium hunting. Yeah. So there's That's different key. variations of, of the hunt. Yeah. Yes. I, I love it. So who, who right now are you closest with on to on tour, Tak? Would you consider yourself a loner? Or do you have a, a close friend that you're always in contact with? I usually uh, stay by myself. I have a little truck camper, land truck camper, so I'm camping all the time. They, uh, sometimes, like a uh, big ground, the same campground, not far from my campsite, or like a day walker, just starting, you know, he had a truck camper this year. And uh, another Japanese guy, Shin Hukai. Yeah, yeah, he, Shin. I, Eat this year, then he has a motorhome and he camp all the time. So, uh, Mike then, McClellan, too, he's always camping now. McClellan is, yeah. But I mean, a lot of guys uh, had a roommate, I mean, traveling partner or kind of like a roommate sharing a lot of information. But, uh, you know, I, I usually just go by myself, just to, uh, you know, gotcha. that's, that's how I go, usually. <laughs> Do you ever get lonely? I mean, don't you get lonely without that companionship? Yeah, I get bored sometimes. Bored is a good word. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha you there. Hey, uh, so let's talk about a little bit about the um, about the Lake Martin event, man. Because um, I mean, talk about all your putting your eggs in one basket, man. I'm I'm really glad that worked out for you. That I mean, that was a one spot. Yeah, that was amazing, and and that's that was a pretty cool win right there. I'm not gonna kid you. How, how did you, how did you find that spot, Talk? I want to know how you found that. Well, I found that spot second day of the tournament, and uh, second day of, uh, no 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 second day of practice. I'm sorry, second gotcha. day of practice. And later in the afternoon, I, I was going to the upriver then just to see how much current they have maybe i can catch big spots you know kusa spots sure but uh, i went up there caught like a two two pound of back to back cast then i never knew that, that many fish gonna replenish or whatever less of the week you know but anyway i started over there in the first day of the tournament caught 15 pounds really quick wow. then i just save it that's how they went the rest of the week. Wow. Yeah, the hardest part for me was waking up early enough to where I could actually see you catch your limit. Because <laughs> yeah. on live, it was so – I got up the one day and, like, started watching at 7.45, and they're like, he's already got five. That's why you had like, to get Ronnie – you got to get Ronnie Moore on the Bassmaster <laughs> Facebook page with the, with the, pre, with the pregame show. That's where talk was wrecking them right it there. It was pretty much like that every day, though, for you, right? Where you'd get your limit pretty much in the first half hour to an hour. It, it was, but I mean, it's not that uh, easy. I, I never know. Fish maybe never show up. Right. Maybe I caught many in the day before. Never get another one. Every day I have to go over there to see. I have to feed it. Then I get decent limit: twelve pounds, thirteen pounds. Then I just bail out and hey. go to, to go somewhere else to spend the rest of the day. Yeah. And, and talk about staying mental tough because that had to be nerve wracking. Talk after you know each night of the derby that had to just be pounding in your brain. Gosh, I wonder if the fish are going to be there. I wonder if the fish are going to be there. Did, was that driving you bonkers, man? Was it driving you crazy? Uh. I don't think that way because things like that I never be able to control. So I don't worry about the things. Maybe fish may be gone or somebody maybe got on that spot after I left or some maybe even a local fisherman maybe get on that spot after three o'clock because they saw me. Sure. All those stuff, uh, I, I have no control with it, right? 
So mm. I just, you know, did the best I can during my tournament hours, tried to figure out and just uh, went up there anyway in the morning to see then if they bite, it's good. If not, I have to go somewhere else. So that's how I think. It was out of your hands. It was in the fate of the bass fishing gods. Yep. That's where it was. <laughs> that's where it was. That, that's, that's outstanding. And, and I remember your, your first win on, uh, on, on Lake Martin. And I, I told you the other day, I was actually watching that. There's a guy that has a YouTube channel, and his name is Lynn Dollar. And he posts all the old bass fishing derbies from Bassmaster, from FLW, and I remember watching your your first win on uh, on Lake Martin, and and ironically that was cranking also the majority of it. It is. Uh, it, it was two thousand one. Then I never had. Uh, I don't know what it is Lake Martin. I won two tour event. I never had any lakes in the country won two tournament. Right. Two national tour level tournament. And so some reason Lake Martin, it was completely different the 2001 and this time. And uh, it, it just, that lake just must like me or something. <laughs> I guess so. I, I guess so. And, and what I remember yeah. about that derby too is uh, you had a giant spot on, on a spinning rod. And your, yeah. your, your co-angler, he had the line like wrapped in the net. You remember that? It was like wrapped in the net, and you're like, just give it to me. I'll do it. I'll do it. And the guy wouldn't yeah. give you the net, and I know I was nervous for you. I was like, yeah. what is going on? And the, the dude won't even give Tak the net. And then finally yeah. he came through, and, and he did it for you. Yeah. Well, all, I, all kinds of stuff happened, but, uh, I mean, the post tournament worked out really good Of course it me. did. <laughs> I think it makes perfect sense. I mean, you're talking about how important it is to be mentally tough, and both of these derbies were tough derbies, you know, and and you hung in there. So obviously, it's working. He was hanging tough. Yeah, hanging tough. Like Takahiro Omori does. Hey, uh, Tak, we like to um, we like to play games on this show. You want to play some games? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Let's... We 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 have a we have a game that uh, that we call. Um, it's actually a game that Trip Weldon and I came up with. Me, Trip Weldon, and Mark Zona came up with this game. Okay. Yeah. In fact, um, Zona and I are doing everything we can to to get this implemented into BASS events. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're the the first game that we play is called Three on Deck, One in Hand. And what that is, Talk is. During the Bassmaster Elite Series events from now on, in fact, this is probably going to be implemented for the rest of the year, so just get ready. So you are only allowed to bring four rods and reels with you, okay? Okay. Three on the deck, one in hand. So if you were limited to four rod and reel combos, and get this, four baits to fish every derby, what would they be, Tuck? That's... No such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's a true story I just made up right now, Talk. That, that's <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I know it's tough. And no, it's not true. You know it's not true. What's it, what would yeah. the four rod and reel be? What would you pick? I uh, pick crankbait. A crankbait. On, so one. one combo. What would the rod and reel be that you'd throw it on? Uh, the seven foot diver cranking out of his, uh, the. 9.1 uh, high-speed diode zero on the <laughs> Yeah. Wow. And, and why do you throw? Why do you like throwing the square bills on that super high-speed reel? It seems kind of not just square bill. I use 9.1 for flipping pitching to deep cranking, Carolina rigging to swim bed, everything. Everything. Wow. Yes. Everything. That's only there, I use 9.1. I wish they make 10.1. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, uh, so what would the next what would the next uh, rod and reel combo? Pick another one now. Okay, another one. Uh, I'm going to the jig. The jig. Like maybe half ounce, just regular flipping jig. What's the rod and reel? I had a 7-3 pitching rod with the same reel, dive a 9.1. 7-3 pitching rod. Okay. Give me another bait. You got two combos left, two more rods yeah. and reels and baits. What are you going to use? So I'm going to spinner bait. Half ounce, uh, like white shatters, spinner bait. 
half ounce spinnerbait, white and chartreuse. What's the rod? Yep. Same seven foot cranking rod. The same for the crankbait rod. Same for and the crankbait rod. Yeah. All right, you got one combo left. You better make it a good one, Tak. Uh, one more. <laughs> one more. One more. I know it's tough. Uh, I, I, I just go to. Uh, Maybe I gotta go to one spinning rod. Yeah. What's the go-to bait? What would you put on there? Uh, maybe shaky head. Shaky head. You can't go wrong. So those are the four combos that you will pick, and that is the uh, that's the shaky head spinning rod, the crank bait, yeah, the spinner bait, and the jig. Yeah. Covering all the bases. That's all you need. It's right there. Keeping it simple, right, Talk? It is. That's it a- is. That's an amazing rule. Don't you think that we should implement that in the elites? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not happening. Not happening. That, that's like limited for uh, growing the talent. You, you know, let us use everything we can to become better fishermen. Yeah, yeah. Let, let it rip. <laughs> let it rip. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, you know, uh, we always talk about on this show, and you always hear about it, in bass fishing, that momentum is everything. And we, and you kind of had a tough year last year, Tak, but we saw the momentum start to climb at the end of the season at St. Clair. And and it, and it kind of continued on, man. Is that is now, that, I, To be honest, I don't believe momentum. On you don't? Fish. Wow, that's awesome. I don't. Because that, the St. Clair was last year. It, it was already, like, what, five months ago? Yeah. And, and, <laughs> Uh, it, it's you know the bass tournament every week we fish different lakes different condition it's totally start brand new it's not like you have a winning fast race car right win every race wherever you go is because you have edge or the you know you have fastest car to race with but a bass tournament you have to start all over every week so Look at the Bobby Lang won the uh, Harris. Uh, he won a Florida, the Open. They come to the Lake Margin back to back tournament. He had uh, he was hundred on the first day. Mm-hmm. In the right. Heat. I mean, it's totally different situation. Totally different lake. You, it, it's uh, it's hard to. I think you know anybody can win any tournament just one week, then. Even had a bad year, whatever. But uh, I mean, it's. Uh, I don't think momentum is not much going. I, I love it. I, he, you are the first angler that's ever been on this show mm-hmm. that has ever said that, and I love it's it. Not like mm-hmm. I'm gonna have a bad tournament next a couple of tournaments, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But it's that much uh, humble sports, you know. It, that's what I think. Yeah, I mean exactly, and, and I, we've never heard it. We've never heard an angler yeah. say that momentum didn't matter. And yeah, I, and I think I, I think it could. The only time it could come into play is if you're going into the same kind of situation, like if two back-to-back tournaments in Florida, same kind of bite. That can kind of carry you, I think, from from tournament to tournament. Don't you think? Yeah, I mean, maybe that kind of situation, you know, like a two side fishing tournament back to back or something like mm-hmm. that. If the the guy do good for the side side fishing tournament, that's just being fortunate. That's not momentum, but, I guess. Well, for the for the season, such a long season ahead of us, ahead of us, it's like nine more tournaments to go. It's a long way, so I, sure. I'm looking yeah. at every day, every tournament. It's brand new. So every day is a new adventure, right? Yep. Hey, hey, the uh, the 2004 Bassmaster Classic. What a, what an amazing victory there, also, and and that c- kind of came into play where you're the I knew it that everybody knows about talk. I knew it, and everybody knows you knew it. But what was the feeling that you had? What what did you know? What exactly did you know? What was it? I, I knew it. I know you knew it. <laughs> I know you did. I knew it. Come up there. But what did you know? What did you know? What What did you know that yeah, those what fish told were going to pull that crankbait out? They were going to eat the crankbait. Uh, you knew that. What was the feeling? What What was it? You know, sometimes you have a feeling that you're going to get bite. 
you're gonna get bad. You're gonna you have a feeling to catch a big fish, like next cast, or you know. So it's like instincts. So if you I physically, I mean, actually, if you catch one, I have. I said I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> so right. You knew it. So talk. I have a new catchphrase for you. Are Are you ready? Yeah. It's a new catchphrase. Okay. You ready for it? Yes. Okay. Talk and roll. Talk and roll. Right there. <laughs> Come on, give it to me. Talk and roll. Talk and roll. Say it. Come on. Talk and roll. Talk and roll. There it is right there. <laughs> Taki, Taki Hero Mori, man. You are a champion, dude. Thank you uh, so much for coming on this show. Do you have any anything you'd like to, uh, to say to your fans and, and the viewers and your sponsors before we go? Yeah, of course I do. Uh, I... Uh... You know, the, the, this whole industry fishing tournament uh, really good for me. The whole, you know, the, I have a high and, a, you know, good time and bad time, high and low. But overall, you know, I've been really enjoying to stay this industry fishing, you know, highest level of tournament. And all this group, the great people and the great company support us. And, uh, I, you know, I hope my career still keep going long, long time. And uh, I, I, I appreciate I mean, I have thanks for to have this kind of opportunity to be able to do this. Yeah, it's amazing. Only in America. Yes, in America. And what, and what an example of a success story, man. C congratulations to you, Takahiro Omori. You, you are a true champion, man. You hear the crowd? The crowd loves you. They love you. <laughs> <laughs> man thank you <laughs> there it is right there don't forget to put that thing in its car seat when you start driving around Just buckle it up i don't want you to get a ticket talk tick tock ticket ticket tock all right hey man thanks again we'd love to have you on again sometime okay sure all right man ladies and gentlemen takahiro amori right there he is a bass champion hey don't go anywhere uh put the power poles down when we get back it's Ronnie Moore. Thank you, Takahiro. Thank you so much, man. Stay tuned for Ronnie Moore. Yeah. stops your boat faster and holds it more securely than power pole shallow water anchors some folks hear power pole and think oh man i can't afford that but did you know you can get the eight foot power pole sportsman 2 hydraulic anchor now with sea monster 2.0 pump and heavy duty hydraulic hose for just 1295 dollars it's got all the features power pole anchors are famous for and a single sportsman 2 will hold a bass boat up to 4500 pounds go check it out at power-pole.com to find a dealer near you power pole swift silent secure taming the beast isn't easy but the bigger your electronics the more you have on the line in conditions like this you need the kvd kong extreme electronics mount the only electronics mount designed and built to be rock solid no movement no matter how heavy your gear a marine grade mount for fresh or salt water that's monstrously strong. The KVD Kong Extreme Electronics Mount. Rageous Outdoors is quickly becoming the industry leader in tournament fishing apparel. There's no better way to represent your sponsors than with a Rageous jersey. At Rageous, you can get a short sleeve, long sleeve, sweatpants, the best prices in the industry. Rageous also offers club and team discounts, special high school and college prices. Our website is easy to navigate, and Rageous's staff will make the process quick and easy for you. Rageous Outdoors, offering high quality tournament apparel for the weekend angle. Outfit yourself from head to toe. Check out Rageous online at www.rageous.com.
Welcome back. The Maniasi continues uh, right here, right now. Uh, pull up the power poles because we're going for a ride right now with a breath of fresh air coming to us from our Kansas. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Ronnie Moore. Yes. Yeah, Ronnie. Give me an internet high five, Ronnie. Give me an internet high five. Yeah. There's Ronnie Moore right there. Welcome, welcome to the show, dude. I appreciate y'all having me on. I I was uh I've been a fan and I've watched and tuned into some of these and uh so to to get invited on it's it's humbling. So it's cool, you know. I'm happy to happy to join y'all. Y'all are having fun. Talk to Heroes deal was awesome. Well, yeah. thanks, man. Yeah, I I don't I learned a lot of stuff from Talk. I, I, I did as well. Like the whole nine nine point one gear ratio for everything that like blew my mind. But crazy. I obviously I'm not a pro angler, but like that was that was cool to to hear that to know. I mean, there's not set rules for bass fishing. You can do whatever you want and feel comfortable with. So that's neat to see that. And, yep. and I thought it was outstanding that he thought that momentum really didn't matter. Have uh, you have you heard that before? I mean. That makes real. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, you could catch a seven pounder, and then the next cast backlash, or lose a seven pounder. <laughs> so like, it could go cast to cast, not just yeah. like wah, wah. day to day, tournament to tournament. You could lose the biggest fish of the tournament right after catching a giant, you know. And so you could be completely down in the dump. I could co totally see that, but yeah, with these yeah. guys, they have so many variables: money, entry fees, sponsors, uh, just trying to make it on tour, and then you know, just trying to make it to the next day. So. I totally get uh, how he starts clean slate, you know, no momentum. I'm not going to rely on what happened yesterday. Yeah, I think confidence is, is the word, not momentum. The C word. When you're running with confidence, that that's your momentum, if For that sure. makes any sense. There are probably a dozen anglers on tour that are really confident that I've noticed and been around, and they're probably perceived by the public as really cocky and mm -hmm. arrogant, but they're just so confident in their abilities that they take luck out of it they take momentum out of it, and they just say, I got a job to do. I got to go catch five fish tomorrow. Whether I get 30 bites or five, I'm going to do what I got to do. And uh, it's it's admirable to see both sides of it, the ones who rely on momentum mentally or the ones who, uh, you know, just fly by the seat of their pants and do it do it based on their own skill. And just kick ass at it every yeah. time. I tend to like the guy that just <laughs> thinks he's going to zero all the time. I love that guy. The underdog? Yeah. The dark horse? Ah, I'm just going to zero. Hey, Ronnie, you, uh, you uh, are – a breath of fresh air. You've probably heard me describing you as this throughout the show. And I sincerely mean that. Um, you, uh, you've brought some amazing things to Bassmaster Live. And uh, what you really are lacking, though, and what we need to take care of right now, we need to nip this in the bud right now, is you need an awesome nickname. You know, we got – Zona's got Z, all right? Um, are the artists formerly known as Z. We know him as that sometimes. Um, you got T-San, but I am going to let you pick your own nickname. Okay. Well, see, what really confused me last year was my first year on live, and I don't know if it's because it's just shorter, but Zona started referring to me as Ron, and it caught me off guard because my dad is Ron. I'm named after my dad. I'm the third, so technically we have the same name whether I go by Ronnie or Ron. So when he calls me Ron, I think of my dad immediately. Like, <laughs> and then you like, behave right away because you think your dad's around. Exactly. Then, but he also called me the Godfather. The Godfather. So yeah. I don't know where that came from, but whatever. As long as he's calling me, I don't care what he's calling me. As long as he's calling me, that means I'm doing something right, or I'm I'm still there. Well, that when he calls you the Godfather, that means he's scared of you, and and he and he's afraid that you're gonna put a horse head in his bed, or or <laughs> give him a fish wrapped in newspaper. That could be. I'd sick the mafia on him. Yes, you know, you but I Chicago I have some nicknames here. I have some nicknames here, and I and I want you to pick yours. Uh -oh. Okay. So the the first one is the. Uh, the uh, neurologist of numerology. <laughs> it's not a very good one. It's a tongue teaser. Tongue it's, a, teaser. it's a tongue twister. The next one is the stat sorcerer. The stat sorcerer. That's not too bad. Okay. We got one more. The sultan of statistics. The sultan of statistics. I like that. I like that. But then again, when you're, when you're deemed that, 
you're going to have a lot of people challenge you thinking they know more stats. And I don't know if I'm just ready for DMs <laughs> and for people texting me. And so I don't, I don't know if I want to claim that. Well, I'll how do you see. think KVD feels? <laughs> exactly. He's got a target on his back. Being challenged. Even after his worst year on the Elite Series, everyone's still like, that's the bar. The, you know, there was a couple of rookies who yeah. beat KVD at the first first Elite. They didn't get a check, but they beat KVD. And even though he finished like 75th or 77th or something, they're like, hey, I beat KVD in my first ever Elite. So it's so crazy to see that. Yeah, I so why impressed. can't you, Ronnie Moore, be the sultan of statistics and you become the bar? Why not? Why not? Well, it's a whole team effort. You know, if they didn't have if, – if the people before me, the pioneers, didn't come up with Bash Track, didn't have these tournaments, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had the statistics to go off of and create. And I wasn't the only one gathering the stats. We've had numerous other people help gather because trying to, trying to dig back just a, a couple of events with 110 anglers is tough. But I do pride myself in knowing some stuff that I probably shouldn't know or at least age-wise that people don't expect me to know. So – I'm cool with whatever. If you want to call me that, I'm cool with that. The, the Sultan of, of, of statistics. That is you. Let's that go with that good. one. I've never been a baseball guy, but um, I'll take it. Yeah, there, there it is right there. And you are raising the bar. And, and, and you're being humble because this whole stat thing, I think that it, I don't know, man, it legitimizes things here. Um, not that the sport is, is by any means illegitimate, but – it actually it, it raises the bar, thank you, to other professional sports. The parallel is there. We, in baseball, there's batting stats. Um, in, in football, yards gained. What, you know, I mean, look, look at it this way. Now we have this in bass fishing. Was it your idea, Ronnie? Was it your idea? No, it probably wasn't my idea. Um basically one of my bosses steve bowman he's been in the industry for longer than i've been alive he knows how much info is in bash track he knows how much info is just in elite series data and uh you know over the years we've gone through different website adjustments and changes and so some stuff you know gets lost in translation and i think that he saw my passion for numbers as well as just like I'm not a yes man, but he was kind of like, we need to get this done. This will be important if we get it done. And I was kind of like, sure, like if you, if you need me to help do it, I can, I'll help figure out how to do it. And so he was the one who knew that there was definitely numbers in there. And for sure you think about it, there was millions of casts, a season for these guys, but you can point to a specific fish or you could point to a specific day that made their year. So we knew there was definitely great info in there. And you got to take the good with the bad. Some of it's unofficial, some of it's not. He made the best analogy to me is in football, a guy on first and 10 runs the ball and gets tackled, and they mark it, and it's second and inches. They didn't give him nine and a half yards gain. They gave him nine yards, and he didn't get 10, but he didn't get just nine. He got nine and a half, but they only gave him nine. Right. Just imagine how many times that might happen the other way as well, but through a career, through a game, you could gain 10 extra yards in a game if they gave you that nine and a half instead of nine. So even in bass fishing, if it's called a three pound, 14 ounce fish and not a four pounder, you know, it, it, it might skew stats a little bit, Gotcha. but at the day it'll, you know, not everything is perfect. If we think about it, batting average is legitimate because it's their average, you know, when every time they go up and swing the bat, but then when they throw the versus right-handed pitchers versus the left-handed mm -hmm. pitchers, some of it doesn't seem as tangible or legitimate because it's, oh, I've only faced six lefties all year, so I might have a terrible average, but I've got such a small sample size. So it definitely will will adjust and stuff, but I definitely agree with you. It legitimizes the sport. It takes that luck factor out. Yeah. Now, you're not going to randomly have a 100th place person in AOI at the top of a important fish catching statistic. The guys who are at the top of those statistics that carry that higher than average uh, number in their category, they're always the guys who are in the top 20, top 30. Maybe it, it might just be everybody who makes the classic because there are those guys who have fantastic tournaments, knock it out, win an event, and that it skews their whole year. And they might be an average angler the rest of the year, but they make the classics of that one big event. So you take it with a grain of salt. It's something that we're trying. 
I appreciate the good feedback from it. I love uh, it. Do not stop doing it. I, I love please. it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely man. Yeah. I, like when I first heard you guys bring this out, I was like, yes, yes. Yeah. Tell me more. I was glued. I was glued. Yeah. I, I thought it was a great idea by Bowman. I love, I actually really cool thing. Well, we also had help with that. Bowman came up with the idea. We figured out how to do it. And then I started collecting some data, but we also had get Brandon. He's one of the guys who works at the events on site, uh, doing what I used to do with bash track and taking photos and blogging and stuff. Uh, when I started doing live, he was uh, definitely full time out on the water. He helped collect a lot of those stats as well and help organize them. Um, so it was definitely he helped a lot. And then uh, I just think that I think it was a perfect storm. You know, I actually wanted to do statistics. I thought I was going to end up being a statistician for the NBA or something because I'm a <laughs> basketball. Fan. You're the Sultan of stats, you know. Well, I thought I was going to do that in high school. I mean, that's that's what I wanted to do. I love numbers. If there was a class I could sleep through and get 100 on a test, it was math. And so it's cool how I was really in love with statistics, picked up journalism and all the photography and videos and, and talking on camera and went through college with that. And then when I get to my job and get the platform that we do, that statistics comes back in. So I, I'm just happy to be in the position I am and to be – asked to have the responsibility some people wouldn't want more responsibility but it's more of an honor every time that they ask me to and you're 24 so right i mean you're you're 24 years old dude you're like an old soul you know that right yeah well when you talked about takahiro moving to the elite or moving to the united states in like 91 or 92 like i was sitting here like whoa like i was born in 93 like that's crazy like, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it is it's Every day, I think like when KVD missed the classic at Hartwell in 2015, that was the first time he had missed the classic since I was alive. And when you think about it like that, I don't wow. have to harp on my age. I think it's it just puts it in perspective. Like I'm honored to be in the industry at such a young age, but when you put in some of those numbers, like we're talking about how they legitimize stuff, hadn't missed the classic since I was alive. Like holy cow, that's like a, a career of perfection almost. You know, that's the mark that you set every every year going into it, and for you to hit it. 99% of the time. That's impressive. Yeah. I, yeah, absolutely, man. Hey, I want to know your, the, the deal. Like how did you actually, um, get the call to work for, for bass? How, how did this happen? Where'd you come from? Where'd so, you come from, Ronnie? <laughs> so long story short, well, I don't know how short it'll actually be, but I like take your time. It. It's a web um, show. We got all night. So all night. in high school, my dad started taking me fishing. I fished as a team partner with him in Fishers of Men. And in North Carolina, that's where I was born in Florida, lived there for a couple years. We moved to North Carolina, and I spent the eight, you know the last 18 or 19 years of my life there before moving to Arkansas last year. So that puts it in perspective. If I say I'm from North Carolina, that's, that's where I would call home. So we fished a lot of team tournaments there, Fishers of Men. And it was just a 50, 60, 70 teams, and it was a bunch of old dudes. And then it was my dad and me. Like, I was the only kid at the tournaments. So I had to grow <laughs> up fast because I had to learn to launch a boat when I was 12 or 13 years old because dad launching and tying up and getting away of everybody would just seem like a hassle. So I learned to do that. Started fishing. He really taught me a lot. He'd let me sleep on the boat. And then I'd wake up, catch a fish, and then I'd fall back asleep. You know how kids are. So Like Corey Feldman of bass fishing. <laughs> he kept taking me. And... uh even when I wouldn't hold my weight or carry my weight tournament fishing, he would still take me, and it was fun. And looking back on it, we used to finish bottom five, bottom ten of these events, and I felt like it was my fault because I was the youngest one in the field, least skilled, still learning. But at the meetings every Friday night, they would all the adults would take their little raffle crankbaits and bags of worms, and they would just walk back from the podium where they grabbed them and drop them off at the table with me. So I started making friends. People, nice. I was kind of everyone's kid. And it was really neat. So I started gaining a passion for fishing. I still played basketball in high school, and, and I ended up breaking my ankle. And then I was, it was all about, I'm not going to go play college basketball. I'm going to do fishing. I'm going to record the football games Friday night for the news station down the road, which is a whole other deal. But that was really cool. Uh, I'm a Christian, so I like to say that God put that in my path. Like, if I would have kept playing basketball, I would have never probably fell in love with fishing as much as I have. Right. Or gotten the opportunity with my job. So. I went to East Carolina. Had a, they had a fishing team there. That was one of the big reasons I went to school at East Carolina. Uh, they had a fishing team and journalism. 
got on the team, got some jobs at school, fished throughout the time, met a lot of people with college bass, um, all the leagues, but meeting, it was kind of a cool thing seeing your Bassmaster family at every event. So met some of the people on the, on, you know, the college Bassmaster uh, platform and added the right people on Facebook. I'd really like to say that Facebook was one of the reasons I got this job. Met, met the right people, added them on Facebook. They saw that I had a passion for fishing and then also that, uh, what I was doing at school, you know, interviewing the football coach every other day after practice, you know, shooting video at basketball games. One day in 2014, I was a junior in college. Um, Shea Baker called me a month before the classic at Gunnersville and said, Hey, do you want to do this? Is this something that would interest you? The second we hung up from the call, uh, I think it was January, I was on Christmas break. So I was in my, my now wife's living room and I like, I looked at her and I said, am I going to need to like skip this semester of classes to do this? I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to let this door close. I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to put my foot in the door. So he called me and then I, I got interviewed and did a resume deal and, and got the job working Bass Track. So awesome. from my junior and senior year of college, I had my foot in the door um, working 12 to 13 events a year, 12 to 20 events a year. And that was really neat. And then when I graduated, uh, in 2015, I took on a couple more opens and stuff. And then in 2016, it was, it was 35 out of the 41 events. So I really got thrown into the fire and it was awesome. And I enjoyed every second of it. Um, welcome to and, the big time. And then in 2017, they uh, asked me to move to little rock. So kind of pulled my wife up from everything she knew in North Carolina and we moved here, but no, it really was college fishing. Not being afraid to talk on stage. You can obviously tell I'm a talkative guy. I wasn't one of those quiet people on stage. If I had seven pounds, I was just as excited as 20. And I knew that that was when people judged you was when you didn't catch them. Nobody wants to really hear what you say when you catch 20 pounds because everyone's happy. Yeah. Um, Reach that to kids, you know, now that I see them like when you go up on stage, if you catch three, four fish, seven pounds, two pounds, whatever it is, be positive. Take that 30 seconds that you get on stage and make it four or five minutes because you don't know who's watching online. You don't know who's in the crowd. And uh, there's a lot of adults around that uh, took a chance on me. And uh, every day I wake up, I try to prove them right uh, or or wrong. Some of them that, that would you know, so. Sure. Uh, Making every wrong. moment count. Uh, this is, it was basically one of those things that got off the phone that one time in 2014. And I was like, well, you may never get this call. I might not have deserved the call in the first place, but. I'm going to work my butt off every day. So you're like, I better carpe this diem right now. <laughs> that's where, <laughs> yeah. that's where you were at. Hey, uh, dude. And, and a success story. And I mean, it's, congratulations again. It, it's, it's amazing, dude. You are yeah. a breath of fresh air. You know that, right? I appreciate it. It's I, my hobby is my job and my job is my hobby. And so my wife might not like it sometimes cause I'm bass fishing nine to five and I'm bass fishing five to nine. So, you know, it's uh, but it's, it, I think it's the best sport in the world. Best Bassin people. ain't easy, but it's a way to make a living, Ronnie. It, it is. Hey, um, to me, the world of bass fishing is a a triangle. Okay, and uh, make make the triangle with me, Ronnie. Okay. Is this the Illuminati? We're not doing the Illuminati, are we? No, 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 no. This okay. is, this is purely just a triangle of bassin, and, and I'm not gonna play rock paper scissors. Don't worry, we're we're good here. So this is the triangle of bass, and in the middle of the triangle is the largemouth bass, or any ba black bass species. To you, what do the other three sides represent? If the bass is the nucleus in the center, what do the three sides represent, Ronnie? What is that to you? I'm getting philosophical, dude. That is kind of a vague philosophical question, but it's yes, definitely absolutely. Probably friends, family, um... and maybe connections or passion. Maybe that's what it is. Friends, family, and passion. Because I probably talk to 90% of the people I talk to daily. I met in college fishing. Uh, I talked to more people outside the state of North Carolina where I spent 18 years of my life. I talked to more people outside that state than I do in the state because of college fishing. I have group chats with people in Alabama, Louisiana, Tennessee, Texas. It's, it's really cool. So I definitely say, uh, friends, you got to have a great family. Sure. Uh, we're coming up in, in a week or two. Uh, I'll 
hit seven years with my wife. We've been married for about a year and a half, but we've been together that long. So it takes a family. My parents have been nothing but supportive during the hard times, the knockdown drag out conversations on the phone. And then the, the out of boys that they text me that they're watching live and stuff. So, uh, they've been there for me for a long time. And then I think the same thing for anglers. And this isn't just talking about me, but in that triangle, I think it's, you got to have a good network, uh, family wise that support because you, the fishermen get to the highest of highs, think that they can do anything, and they get to the lowest of lows. Same thing in the work. So, so that Definitely. to you, that is your bass and galaxy right there. Definitely. Our producer is doing obscene things here in front of me, Ronnie. I'm sorry that I couldn't focus for a moment. I'm really glad you can't see that side of the camera. Being all gingy. He was getting all crazy on us. Yeah, that, that's for sure. But, uh, man, you... Uh, in the, again with with the bass and triangle and i i asked that question um because i like to see where people's mindset is with that and 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 it kind of shows you that your your foundation is with i i guess you would call that a foundation of faith because with without those those elements there there is no opportunity for you to make a living bass fishing with that bass in the center of that triangle 100% 100% that other that other branch of it was passion uh, I think that, like they say, you never work a day in your life. You know, if you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life. And so there are good days, there are bad days, but every day I'm excited to wake up. It's a blessing to wake up. Some people don't get to do that every day and I could be digging ditches. So, uh, you know, there's just, there's just an awesome thing about it. No matter what you do, if you take pride in it and you enjoy it, uh, it makes life go a whole heck of a lot easier. There, there it is, man. Hey, um, we uh we got a special surprise for you too. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Um. Now uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what's going on here, and it's um it's some viewer mail for you to answer. But the okay. viewer mail is being presented by a very very special guest. Okay. So I I need you I need you to close your eyes for a minute. Okay. I'm not gonna get freaky with you. Just close your eyes for a minute. Are you ready? Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Dance, and today's viewer mail is brought to you and answered by Ronnie Moore. The first question comes in from little Tomas Sanders from Arkansas. He writes in, Ronnie, if a $5 launch fee is too much to pay at a local lake, then what would be the right number? Just asking for a friend. Oh, that's funny. That's, uh, I'm assuming Tomas Sanders is Tommy Sanders. Um, and you know, it's just, a fisherman ain't rich. You know, you gotta, whether it's $5 launch fee or, you know, if you pay once a month, you know, or whatever, if you're going out for a three hour trip, you're catching me off guard with this question, but you're going out with a three hour trip. That's like, the idea, Ronnie. $2, a, $2 an hour, you know? Two dollars is the ideal launch fee, as heard by Ronnie Moore. Ronnie, the next question comes in from Zark Mona from Michigan. Zark writes in, Ronnie, how many hours of past Bassmaster and Zona show footage do you watch a month? Just a ballpark, Ronnie. How much amount of time is consumed by this task? Uh, ballpark. Let me just pull a calculator out. Um, Give us some stats. I'd probably say 200 hours a month. 200 hours a month. That's, that might be too much. My wife just walked in from work. She might not. She might agree with that, but she might, she might not. <laughs> Here's another one, again, from Zark Mona in Michigan. Zark writes in, Ronnie... Have you ever considered poisoning Tommy Sanders for his job? <laughs> no, that would be too much pressure to take on his job at 24. I'll, I'll hang out and watch him and learn from him for as long as he wants to stay. And I do not expect to take his job. I expect this industry to change. So uh, as long as Tommy wants to stay, he can stay because he's the man. There you have it, Zark Mona. He is not planning on poisoning Tommy Sanders. Thanks, everybody. I'm Bill Dance, and this has been another edition of Viewer Mail with Ronnie Moore.
<laughs> wow, you're you're well liked apparently. You're, you're, Shoot. Yeah, even Bill Dance calling in <laughs> on your behalf. I may have opened my eyes when you were saying a question, so it may not have been Bill Dance asking it. But you, come on, I can't, te- I can't tell. That's not even playing fair. Did Bill Dance call in on a private number? <laughs> yes, Bill Dance called in on a private number in my head. Okay, that's exactly how how this happened. And um, and speaking of your your buddy um, Zark Mona from from Michigan, or Dark Zona, whatever you want to call him, Dark yeah. Dark Zona. He uh, you got a new position with that guy, huh? I hear you're gonna be uh doing a little Z live action. Shoot, if it if they're all like the one last October was, I will gladly do it because last October was probably the 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 best slash worst three days of my life. That's the weirdest things to say, but. The weather wasn't very good in Upper Michigan, but I got to to fish with him one day as we shot a photo gallery. Caught a triple on an A rig of smallmouth. That was amazing. We had four on and one came off, so that was um, it. Could have been a quadruple, but caught a triple with him. And then uh, the next day we shot a zone alive. I got to answer questions and hang out on the water. Two of the best things in the world. And him and Ayler caught twenty something pounds. And then the next day, they shot the actual TV show that y'all will be privileged to see in a, in the coming weeks. And let's just say it was the best three hours of my life. I'm not even going to say the best day <laughs> of my life. It was three hours of my life because their best, other than my, my, my wife just said, wow. Yeah. Other than our wedding, babe. Other than our wedding. In bass fishing, he's talking <laughs> about. Come on. We know. His bass life. His bass life. Yeah. yeah. The three hours, I mean, they caught their best five you saw photos last fall of him post they probably had 28 pounds easy best five of smallmouth and the best 10 it was probably upper 50s i mean it was it was the craziest day of the craziest couple hours of fishing ever and i made it to the airport for my flight so we didn't even have to take a whole day so i'm excited i don't know where we'll be going but i will get to go and hang out with zona shoot some photos uh and really learn i mean and then by no means am i sucking up or anything literally it's just fun to hang out with Tommy, Davey, Zona, Mercer, and just and just you know hang out with them. I mean, literally, I learned so much just watching them. What it is to be a professional in the sport, what it is to take the good comments on on social media with the bad, and to see how they got to the where they are years ago, and to know that I've had opportunities that they didn't have, and they need to take advantage of them and all that stuff. So, they those guys are definitely my mentors, all four of them. And it's it's pretty neat that uh, they welcomed someone of my uh, adolescence. Dude, you got a great head start. You're a blossoming little bird. They're feeding you. They're <laughs> they're feeding you, little Ronnie Moore. I don't fall out of the nest You're... too hard. <laughs> 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 Just don't become the Corey Feldman of bass fishing. Promise me that. Don't do it. Don't do this. I, I promise. Okay. Good. 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 Hey, uh, let's play a game, man. It, let's first. I want to talk Bassmaster Classic. Lake Hartwell okay. coming up, I think, tw- what, 22, 23 days, guys? Yes, sir. But let's play a little uh, a Bassmaster Classic Trivia game show to kick okay. things off. Okay? And we're, now, don't look. You can't. Don't. Well, I'm not what looking. we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to put up our stack guy, Ryan Popcorn Whitaker, with the awesome beard. Doesn't he have an awesome beard? He actually stands, right. in, he st- actually stands in for Conor McGregor. He's a stunt double for him. Did you know that? <laughs> I take the punches. That's Ryan Whitaker. So we're putting you, Ronnie Moore, the Sultan of Stats, up against Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. Oh boy! In a, uh, are you nervous, Ryan? Yeah, I'm a little nervous. It's Ronnie freaking Moore. Hey, he does this. <laughs> it's it's Ro- paid to do this. It's Ronnie freaking Moore, the Sultan I do it of while Stats. I'm supposed to be working another job. <laughs> yeah, I'm all excited about this for some reason. I don't even know what's going on here. But uh, let's, uh, 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 g- Miss Jackson, give me a beat. I'm what? Oh, what? Ah, yes, it's time for the Bassmaster Classic Trivia Show Edition with Ronnie Moore and Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. Guys, here's what we have here. There are four questions, okay, four questions. They are covering the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s. I am going to give you the year and the lake. You gentlemen need to tell me the winner of the Classic that year and the bait or baits mm. that they caught the fish on. The baits. Are you ready for the challenge, Ronnie Moore? Woo, sure, since two of those years, or two of those decades, I wasn't around. That so is we'll correct. 
Oh. First, you got the first I, well, answer I'm right. I'm with you there. And Ryan Whitaker, are you ready for the challenge? I am ready. Now, this is your home court, Ryan Whitaker. Oh, it so is. So would you choose to go first or pass to Ronnie Moore? I'll pass. I'll gonna, defer. Passing to yes. Ronnie Moore. Ronnie Moore is leading it off. Here we go. Ronnie, the 1976 Classic on Lake Gunnersville and the 1977 Classic on Lake Tohopalakalikalika. Who were the winners of these events and what were the baits? I think those were the years that Klon went back to back. Mm. I know he won the first one, but I'd assume Klon and Klon. That's Klon and Klon. Give me some baits. The 76 oh. classic. What was the, the bait or baits? I do not know what he did Gunnersville with, but I believe Toho, there was some kind of buzzer, buzz bait, buzzer type deal. And I think he caught some on a spoon, but I don't know Gunnersville. You are exactly right, Ronnie Moore. It was a Floyd's buzzer and a black Johnson Silver Minnow Spoon on Toho. Ryan Whitaker, would you happen to know the, the bait on, uh, that he won Gunnersville with? Is that the honeybee? No, that was a Fleck Weed Waiter, Fleck Weed Waiter Spinner Bait. I say that 10 honeybee times. Honeybee a different year. It's a Fleck, Fleck what? Fleck Isn't... Weed Waiter Spinner Bait. Fleck Boom. Weed Waiter. It's right there. So, Ronnie Moore, you got the, we're giving the first one to you. So, Ronnie, would you like to answer this one or pass it to Ryan? What year were you born, Ryan? 83. I'll pass it to him, even though he was four when, or when he was, you know, in that decade. You know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Know. We're Something. bringing it back to the 80s. in that decade, but I think in probably the last six months of it. We're, yeah. we're bringing it to the 80s, and it's going to Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. Ryan. All right, sir. It's the 1987 classic. Okay. Okay, that was on the Ohio River. Yes. And then the 1988 classic. Was on the James River. Okay. Who 87. Won, who won the 87 tournament? 87 is George Cochran. George Cochran, yes. And that, you want the bait now, too? I do want the bait. It was a spinner bait. Yes, sir. Is that a man's spinner bait? Think about it one more time. Wait, that's a Strike King it's spinner bait. It's a Strike bait. King spinner bait. Right. Good uh, job, Ryan. There was one yes. more bait. One of the first spinner baits I ever had. One other bait for that classic? Yeah, for George Cochran. Uh, all I got is the spinner bait for that one. It's, it's but that's okay. We're, we're giving it to you because Ronnie only got one of them on the other one. And then what's the other year? The other bait was a purple and white Mr. Twister. Oh, God. Yes, 1988. I wouldn't have got that. The James River. Who won? 1988, the James River. Who that's Guido that? Hibden. That's Guido Hibden. Outstanding. Outstanding. What's the bait? Is that a ribbon tail worm? Um, that is wrong. That is a wrong answer. That's wrong? Oh, God. Dang it. Are you tallying this, JP High, the hip hop fisherman? One. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so we got Ronnie Moore on the first one. So that he got a two parter. So it's Ronnie Moore's got two points. And Ryan has one point. Okay, so it's Ronnie Moore two to one. Does he not get credit for getting both classic winners right? We're getting, yeah, get, why did I get one? I, oh. th I think we're pretty much tied. Wait, I, I, wait, I would I, give him an extra hold on, like, I got, half point. Hold on a second. I got to phone a friend. Hold on a second. I would give him an extra half point for getting the bait right. Yes. Yeah. Wait, hold on. I'm talking to Jerry McInnes right now. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Okay, Jerry. Yep. I got it. Tie score. It's a tie score right now, guys. Jerry says tie. Tie. Boom. Right there. We're moving on to the 1990s. Yes. Oh, yes. The 1991 Classic. Who's this going to? Whose turn is it? It's Ronnie Moore's turn. It's to you, Ronnie. 1991 Classic was on the Chesapeake Bay. And the 1994 Classic was on High Rock. Ronnie, who won the, uh, the Chesapeake Bay 1991 Classic? That's the Ken Cook Smashing Them Classic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's the bait? Um, Wasn't he doing... I mean, I'm going to go spinnerbait because it's the Chesapeake. But wasn't he throwing like a crankbait as well? I just don't know the brand of the crankbait. 
This guy's good. This guy is good. Think about the hat he used to wear a lot. That guy is good. That's a hint. He's right there. <laughs> We're giving you that. That was a, uh, a heartthrob spinnerbait and the short wart by Storm. That's what he had going there. Who won the 94 what? Classic? Who won the 94? Not the 94 Classic was right down the street from where I grew up. So it was at High Rock, and that was uh, Brian Kirchel. Brian Kirchel. Fish Brian. Whistle. What did yeah. he, he win it on? Uh, what he just a uh, worm, just it's like a ribbon tail worm, or a you know what color? Ooh, um, I don't know. I'm gonna go June bug, but I I don't know. It's a red shad, close. Yeah, red shad. It's a red shad, R- real close. And and uh, and God God rest yeah. both of their souls, Ken Cook and Brian yeah. Kershaw. Yeah, right there. Yeah, two two heroes of the sport, right there. All right, uh, the last one. Uh, g- good job, by the way. Yeah. Good job, Ronnie Moore. There, I'm impressed. Real good. Don't, I knew you were going to do that well. He's I'm looking not, at my answer. I'm not looking at anything. I can't see that. Okay. Yes. All right. You ready? Uh, let's go to the 2000s. All right. We're going to the 2000s. Honestly, Ryan, I'm most nervous about this. With Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. You are so nervous my right now. My short term memory. It's sucks. only Ronnie Moore, the Sultan of Stats, for crying out loud. No. It's just a kid. <laughs> I only got Ryan, 10 years on him. Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. The 2001 Classic in New Orleans. Yes. And the 2012 Classic. Okay. On the Red River. Okay. <laughs> to, wait, what was the first one? <laughs> Did you say 01? I'm absolutely losing 01? it. I'm sorry. The 2001 Classic okay. in New Orleans. And the 2012 Classic. Okay. 2001 is Kevin Van Dam. Yes. Kevin Van Dizzle. And he won that on a Strike King spinnerbait. Oh, where's my buzzer? Are you serious? Gosh darn it, Ryan. You're close. That was the one in New Orleans. No, not even close. That's the one in New Orleans where he was doing the one-two combo platter of flipping the black blue jig and throwing the Strike King wild thing. The wild thing. The wild. He'd love to do the wild thing. You know what I mean? All right, yeah, that's a big stinker there. See that? So you were so damn close. Ah, yes. Let's get funky now. 12. 2012 Um, classic. My favorite angler. Who's the winner, brother? My absolute favorite. Yes. Who's the winner? Christopher Lane. Chris Lane. Chris Lane. Kapow. Kapow, kapow. He won that flipping Mm. a tube. You want a tube? Yeah. Flipping a tube. I, good God. Why are we playing Kapow. this music right now? Kapow, good God. Hey, you're back. Run it more. Jump back and kiss yourself. Ha. What else? Tube and what else? Tube and what else? Man, I Give me more of that I funk. I love the that. tube. Play the funk music again for the rest of the show. I don't know if Facebook will like it. I only remember I only the re- tube. Wait, you know... Be- do you know Ronnie? You know, that was when he did the otter. That was when he was. Thank you was very much. Oh, That's otter. a time we got to yeah. give it to Ronnie Moore. Yeah, he's taking it. Ronnie Moore, you are the champion. Yes. Wow. No. Did you? Pow. Pow. Yes. Wax on, wax off, Ronnie Moore. That was it. That was amazing. Great that job. Was, he was. No. That's a good one A one B. I'm not I'm not gonna say you uh, you held your own right there. Well, you're the I, guest, so yeah. we gave it to you. But Ryan, Another phenomenal point. job. Oh, thank you. Seriously, I gotta work on the baits. You were nervous as the Dickens. No, yeah, I mean you were. I have confidence. Crying but, out loud. I mean, come on. I usually mop the floor with everyone around here. This but. this. this <laughs> Uh, Except for this guy that knows the yeah. baits for some reason. I know. See, <laughs> the I, could, you doing? I, I know the baits. I'm, I really do. Like, I can't tell you the years, but when you say the winners, I know the baits. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a bait freak. That's the weirdest thing. Yeah, it, it is It is crazy. Of the weird things about you, that's the weirdest. <laughs> I know. You don't know the years. <laughs> I know the baits. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie, man, uh, we got the 2018 Classic coming up here on, on Lake Hartwell in um, – it, uh, it's setting up pretty good, man. I mean, it's been a harsh, horrible winter, okay? But the first obvious question, uh, who's your pick? Who's your pick for this deal? It would have been hard to pick against Casey Ashley maybe two weeks ago. But with all these rains, Hartwell's, Hartwell's filling up every single day. Yes, sir. And 
I think that no matter if the water temp isn't where it needs to be for shallow deal to play out, I feel like those fish are already flooding the banks with the dirty water coming in. But then also all that buck brush, all that like shoreline grass, that's not going to be green and plentiful. People think of grass like mats. There's going to be some of that shoreline grass with some buck brush. And I think that it's going to keep filling up and they're not going to suck it down dry where it was. It might just, they might bring it down a little bit in anticipation of rain. So who's your pick? I, I got to go with the power guys like Christy, Hackney and Reese. Like those are the three dudes that I, I that I'm thinking about. Christy, Christy Hackney, Hackney, and Hackney Reese. Reese. Okay. Because of the conditions that are setting up. I think that, and yeah, for sure. I think that Christie's do one and Hackney's do one. And then I think Skeet Reese is just one of those dangerous power fishermen where when those fisheries flood and there's just maybe not spots and it's just covering water with a big bait or covering water with whatever baits, right. I, I think he's going to do well. That's where Shooter yeah. McGavin comes in. Skeet mm-hmm. Reese. Boom, right there. Um, R- Ronnie, <laughs> ask me my pick. Who's your pick? Well, Ronnie, let me tell you. Um, I think, th- and I'm I'm kind of going, uh, I'm kind of calling an audible here, okay? Because if you look at a little bit of history here on this lake, and the way it's setting up shallow, uh oh, I know who you're picking. I'm taking John Cox. Exactly. Mm-hmm. John, taking he's John been, Cox. He's he's been a huge person lately. Um, that that's been popping into the equation for sure. So, and I think he's he doesn't fish history. He just fishes nope. every day. He does, he's one of the guys on stage. I don't know if I'm going to catch one tomorrow. Yeah, he flies I, by the seat of his pants. Oh, yeah. So I think I think that's a good pick. I think that I avoid those picks now because he's such a hot pick. I do a lot of fantasy fishing. I feel like he's such a hot pick now with the conditions, and because he's won there and now the conditions will be similar, that his percentage is going skyrocket on fantasy fishing. So because I, uh, ownership, I just stay away from him, not because I don't think he'll catch him. I think that. Uh, I think he'll just be a highly picked person. So he's only, not a dark horse. The only variable for him, though, is that if he makes the cut in the FLW that, yeah. that same week, he's only going to get like a day of practice, I if know. that. He'll have, uh, you know, which could be good because be I don't know how clear the water will be with the rains and stuff, so it, won't, it might not be necessarily sight fishing. And uh, one good thing is was – is that he would actually have that day of practice the week of the classic, not those three days right. ahead, the week ahead. He'd have that immediate practice day right before the classic starts. And for somebody like him, uh, that's my that might be all he needs if he can't look at fish. He doesn't need to go mark them. He can just kind of bunker down in an area. And yep. we've seen it. Yeah, they won't, don't have to be up there. Edwin Evers wasn't at the top or near the top. He was he was in the teens day one at. Sure. Grant or and, Jordan and Lee. He was just waiting day, for you know. the wind. He was waiting yeah. for the wind. What do you think, Ryan? Who do you think is who's your Man, pick? Kai, I'm I'm with you with Cox. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and and I really I'm uh, so far removed from the whole fantasy fishing thing. I I actually thought that that was a unique pick that I had was John Cox, but apparently not. Yeah, pretty much any tournament you ask me, I'm gonna say John Cox, even if he's not in it. <laughs> I just want him to win. He's awesome. <laughs> he's Mr. Smiley but when he I, comes I, on the show. Uh, Jason Christie as well. I mean, he's he, he wants one. Yeah, and he, uh, he's the dude just shows up. But yeah, and he's an Indian like Wayne Newton. Yes, that's that's. It's gonna be hard for Casey to do that offshore deal. I feel to the extent that he did it before, but I don't think that he's gonna be sold out on just doing offshore. I think he's lived there. He knows that place. He'll be able to go shallow and find those different areas where when it floods. That's one good thing he has is that he's yeah. been around that lake when it's flooded and yeah. what it's been like, you know, probably all stages of the year when it's flooded. So I feel like Casey will do just fine. But, man, if this was Vegas or gambling odds or, or you know, Bassmaster came out with predictions uh, that I wasn't involved in, but they, you know, Casey was two to one. If we're talking about betting like that and putting, you know, money down or really odds, it's so hard to pick him because everyone expects him to win. But. Man, he's right. going to do well. He'll probably be in the Super 6 or, or right around it. And even if he's in 10th, everybody's going to be looking in the rearview mirror knowing that he could pull out something on that final day, you know. Yeah, here at Straight Cast, we get it done. Yeah, we, we have a different um, fantasy fishing at Straight Cast, and we just pick the person that's not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, 
we had a group email with all the personalities with Bassmaster Live, and we picked our AOI predictions and classic predictions, and Tommy Sanders picked Bobby Lane for the classic <laughs> and then accidentally stuck with it and picked Brett Height. He had the B dot lane, and then he went B dot height, and we were like, Bobby, Brett's not even in the classic. And he was like, oh, I knew that, I knew that. So <laughs> he was picking somebody. He was picking a long shot, someone not even in it, but I have faith yeah. in Tommy's judgment. Well, I my picks that are, are not going to win this classic, I have uh, Stanley Mitchell. Stanley Mitchell will not win this. Yeah. Um, neither will Bo Dowden. Bo Dowden will not win this classic. Don Butler's not going to win either. That, that's that's correct. And um, another person that is definitely not going to win this classic is Keith Richards. He will not win this classic. No. Yeah. No. Are there any write-in votes the day before to get people in the classic? Are yeah. We doing that? Oh, there should be. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking for Lorenzo Lamas to get in the classic. I think that would be an amazing pick. I'd really like to get Orlando Wilson. Yeah, where the yeah. hell is Orlando Wilson? Do you know, Ronnie? I don't. I'm. Um, I feel like I should know this, but I don't know who Orlando Wilson is. See, you, or, you don't. Well, he I mean, disappeared by the time he was born. Yeah, jeez. Right. Wow. He was, <laughs> wow. Look him up. I'm kind of shocked. Yeah, the show. It's the Orlando Wilson fishing show. Yeah, it's got a great theme song. Oh my God. Ronnie Moore didn't know that. I Ryan, know. you're the winner now. <laughs> Ryan won the contest. It's I a penalty. It's a handicap. My age sometimes. I'm telling you, it's not all beneficial. It's like. Listen to this song, Ronnie. Listen. I called a friend and said, let's go try luck. He said, I'm sorry, buddy, I can't go. I'm watching the Orlando Wilson fishing show. Pick it, son. Yeah. Come on, man. That's Orlando Wilson right there. <laughs> That's how we like do it. it. He's a Braves catchy. fan. It's Orlando. He, the guy was about four foot three. He was he was a, just a little taller than that guy from Fantasy Island. Do you know that show? Tattoo. He used to flip a lizard. How about until mini all me. the appendages were Mini me out. from Austin Powers. Yes, I, I got you on that. One. I know Vern Troyer. Yes, Vern Troyer. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, Fun Orla fact: uh, My girlfriend's parents live like two houses down from Vern Troyer's uh, boyhood home. You gotta be kidding me! No, I'm kidding. Where's my shock suspense? I'm not uh, kidding. Sound effect for that one. That is a true story that I did not make up. <laughs> is is his house smaller than the rest of the ones on the block? Well, I'm sorry. you know there was a there is a shed with some windows out in the backyard, and I hope that that's not where. That's his summer home, dumb him. dumb. That's where he <laughs> Every, stays. That's right. The house is large though. It's a big house. So Ronnie, yes, Ronnie <laughs> Ronnie Moore is going with Jason Christie, Shooter McGavin, who is Skeet Reese. Or, what was your other pick? Greg Hackney. Hack attack. That, the hack attack, man. That's, that's a tough one. And I want to see a shallow water derby. I'm not going to kid you, man. I, I want to see a shallow water derby for this. Yeah. I mean, we saw really shallow jerkbait fish get caught in the backs of pockets last time we were there with that early morning heron deal uh, with Ot Defoe and with, even with Peroznik and then Mike Iconelli. They were all catching fish in the backs of the pockets where basically that ditch would like hit the back wall of the pocket and those fish, those that bait would just settle there. Dude, we could see buzzbait fish, we could see frogs, we could see sight fishing, we could see offshore. It it could be one of the coolest tournaments. And with the water rising, Lake Hartwell is huge. And in the in the uh in the drawdown period, you lose so much water. Adding seven, eight more feet of water, that place can you can go forever in the backs of some of these creeks. So right, we could yeah. see the biggest Based out from going from Conroe, the the close proximity fishing everyone was doing, it wasn't that fishing that big. Harwell could fish huge for for its given size. They could, they could be all the way to Clemson for crying out loud. They surely can flipping yeah. flipping the stadium. Hey, uh, <laughs> Ronnie, uh, dude, seriously, man, um, we we appreciate you the support that you showed uh, your appearance on this show. You know the fact that you're coming on, it you blew us up on the social media and. And uh, we great. Please know, I'd like to publicly thank you for 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 showing that support, dude. You know? Well, it's fun, dude. Everybody's like, you're famous, you're a superstar, and it's like, I'm humble by even somebody wanting to talk to me fishing. I don't have to call my buddy at eight thirty at night and talk fishing. When you guys invite me on here, I can talk fishing here. So <laughs> I would have doing it whether I was on camera or, or not. So I really do appreciate it, and uh, I like to be open. I know that Mercer. Davey, Tommy, Zona, they all get hammered with stuff and have for years. Same thing with Van Dam. All those guys just get hammered with questions. 
I like to be that bridge between the younger generation, the ones who I cover in the college series, high school. Anybody has questions, I want to be somebody who can answer them because I know uh, how hard it is to get in touch with the people who actually know more than me. I like to just try to give them the best uh, answers I can on stuff. So I like to be available. So I'm I'm down for whatever. If you would have called me at 11 o'clock at night, I would have came on. I would have woke up and done the Skype. So awesome, I'm happy dude. to call invited me. Thank, thank you so much, man. And uh, And you are – a breath of fresh air. I mean that sincere, sincerely, man. You really are. And we ex- we expect great things from you, so don't let us down. For sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, you have any final last words you would like to say to to your let's be real about this, your fans. Let let's let's I, say just I don't know. Take fishing every day is fun. I, I fished a BFL this past weekend and caught three pounds and had a blast and got beat. So uh, just don't, don't think about your, your finishes or how many followers you have or how many views you get on stuff. Just keep doing it. Keep enjoying it. Keep documenting. Go out fishing. Whether you catch a two-pound or not, don't be afraid to hold it up. Too many people are saying, you know, you've got to catch four-pounders to hold them up and judgmental these days. So do your thing. Uh, love yourself. Be proud of who you are. Be confident. And you'll get a call one day that you never expected but because somebody was watching. So. I'm genuinely uh, humbled to, to work where I do, and I, we got a lot of cool stuff coming in the future, and, and it's cool to be a part of those meetings now. So We can't awesome. wait to see more from you too, Ronnie. And stay in that Bass oh, Triangle sure. because you are the Sultan of Stats. That is I you. I appreciate it, y'all. Ronnie Moore right there. Thanks again Thanks, so man. much, Ronnie. Boom, that's Ronnie Moore. We'll catch you next time. We'll see you at the Classic, buddy. Yes, sir. We'll see you there. Ronnie Moore, the breath of fresh air. Boom, wow, that's another, that's another show. Another rap right there. Ah, yes, but it's time for the funky breakdown Why? of the winner. Yes, this is my bass porn music. Where did this... Uh, it is. Yes, the funky sounds. JP High? Where did this funky where, music come from? We're about to... Uh, what is the origin? We're about to uh, pick a winner. Funky music. We're about to pick a winner here uh, for the contest, the Dem Jig. I'm feeling giveaway pretty nice. contest. I'm feeling, feeling all right. Back? And mellow? I feel like a hundred dollars. Yeah, feeling like a two dollar bill <laughs> right now. Hey, uh, JP, let us pick a winner for the the giveaway contest. Right there, you got one, JP. Yeah, I got one. Who's the winner? Justin Davis. Justin, Justin Davis. Davis. <laughs> he has won a fifty dollar prize pack for them jigs. He right won them jigs. Well, Straight cast makes magic happen. It, it, it's right there. Justin, you need to instant message the uh, Straight Cast Facebook page, and uh, John DeMay will send you out a $50 prize pack of Dem Jigs, some of the highest, finest quality bass fishing, flip, swim, football, the whole deal. Great jigs. And the, and the universe in the bass and galaxy. It's right there. We hey, hope, it's. We hope he's still watching. Oh, yeah. It's, it's it's his loss if or he you're doesn't. Not them. Yeah, it's his loss. Yeah. we'll have to carry it on. So let's well, let's do this. No. Go. Is, you want to pick another alternate? So if he doesn't answer, no, no, Justin, no, we'll do that Justin, later. You won. Justin won. Justin I, Davis. I will reach out to you if you don't reach out soon. But if but if he's not watching, I don't want to give him the prize. Uh, he won. Well, he did the work. He did the footwork. We're giving him the giving him the prize. You're getting the jigs. Well, I'll be the judge of that, Justin. I was going to pick Takahiro because he also followed the rules. Takahiro yes, did. did too. Yes. We should give the jigs the talk. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have a jig sponsor, does he? Ronnie Moore did too. Yeah. And Ronnie Moore did too. Yeah, so, hey, okay, there's so another episode of Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. Uh, I'm Pat Renwick, Ryan Popcorn Whitaker, JP High, the Ginger Ninja producing the thing. Larry Kyleman's in the house. He's going to have this uploaded for you on iTunes in the morning. And don't forget to uh, subscribe to the iTunes and give us a review. Uh, tell us whatever you want about this show right here. And thank you so much to all of our sponsors and most importantly to all of you who viewed because without you, uh, we are not a – this show would not exist. And next week, we have a huge show again, just like every week. We bring you the best in the business. Brent Ayler coming to you live here next Wednesday night. Until then, I bid you peace.